<laughs> hey, yo, I hate to laugh at this, but this shit was so... I really feel like everybody on this episode tonight was really competing for who can be the fucking dumbest. I mean, really. Like, I just can't take it. So, Life After Lockup, Love During Lockup, Bonded for Life, Season 4, Episode 48. Um, please do me a favor. Please be sure to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you all for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so please hit the subscribe button. All right, so... <laughs> Uh, I don't even know how to order these people tonight because it's just too many fucking dummies. So let's start with Savannah and Jake in Iowa. Savannah is meeting with her friends at a wedding shop for dresses. So I said, this bitch done lost her motherfucking mind. All right, she has two good friends. And they were supposed to be shopping at the shop for her friend Megan's wedding. So I said, whoo, okay. All right, maybe she ain't as stupid as I've been thinking she is. Well, Savannah, let me tell you what, what you are. Not only are you a dumb, bird, broad bitch, but you a badass fucking friend. And you know what? If I was Megan, I would have whooped your motherfucking ass with the first fucking hanger I could have fucking found. Because you, you's a sloppy bitch. Okay, on top of the fact that you've been fucking everybody in Iowa City and everywhere else. So, why would you take that moment away from your friend that you've been friends with since, like, middle school? Why would you do that? I don't care what you are planning to show up at a prison with. That's your friend's time to find her wedding dress. And as her friend, you were supposed to be there for that purpose. She is up here talking about how she's going to get a dress and show up at the jail and make him marry her. Girl, you can't find nobody to do this fuck shit with in the free world. First of all, you are too hung up on this motherfucker. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't. Okay? So, she was supposed to be there shopping for a bridesmaid's dress. She was like, well, yeah, I'm here. We can look at some bridesmaid's dresses. You got a friend with a wedding, with a real husband, a real fiance. And then you tell a woman that's there... But I need to look at some dresses for brides. Let me tell you something. Savannah, you would have been out my way and I would have cursed you the fuck out. Because let me tell you something about a bitch that tries to take away your moment like that. When you're somebody's friend, I don't give a shit. And her friends seem very nice. But even if she wasn't, you don't take that moment away from anybody. You don't do that. And that says to me that your friends are better friends to you than you are to them. And fuck you. Okay? So, she is making excuses like her friend starts catching Megan up, the one who was there when they were talking on the phone, um, and she's making excuses like her friend didn't hear him say he wanted to be with other women physically, explore other women, he didn't want to get married or live together straight out of jail, and they were like, so why are you doing this? Anyway, so Savannah starts trying on the dresses, I'm just keep it real, every single dress was ugly. It was ugly. And maybe, you know what? It was especially ugly because, one, you were rushing. Two, um, none of those dresses look good. And maybe because it was somebody else's wedding trip that you fucking deserve to not be able to find a dress. You selfish hoe. Her friend, <laughs> oh, it made me mad. Her friends like, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, if she goes and shows up at the prison and he doesn't want to get married. That's some dumb shit. That is dumb. <laughs> Girl, bye. I don't, I hope she ends up with egg on her face. All right. Andy and Brittany. I'm so over them. I'm so over them. But apparently we're not going to get over them because they, they're going to follow us into life after lockup on the 15th. So Andy calls Brittany. She gets out in a few days or whatever. All right. So she tells him, well, look, if you want to be cool or awesome, something like that, it's my son's birthday. So you can bake him a cake. This is the same man that you were just beefing with. He had been lying about his relationship with his own kids. Brittany, you want some fuck shit too. So then he starts asking her, well, do you need clothes? You know, if you need anything like lingerie, like if you get my drip. She started laughing. She fucking laughed at him. She didn't like apologize. Like, oh, you know, I didn't mean it like that, babe. She didn't, nothing. Okay. 
She is using you, Andy. Probably until her real boyfriend, her real man gets out of prison too. <laughs> Y'all are some dummies. I'm sorry. I, I can't feel sorry for y'all. Y'all were really competing tonight, and I can't take it. So his friend, the same one who was looking up her information on on the clock, knowing it was illegal, uh, decides he's going to ask her while she's on FaceTime or whatever it was uh, about all the guys she's lived with. I'm like, why in the fuck, friend, are you letting her know <laughs> How you are creeping on her by doing a background check and misusing your work time. And you basically just perjured yourself. You know what? You should have been like that guy in Iowa. He just got to be looking. <laughs> I just can't with these people. I just can't. So he asked him like, he asked uh, Andy, you know, how much he close to him cost. He was like, they're probably going to total about $100. I was like, shit, that's it? And we getting whole outfit? Shit, I'll dress like a cowboy if I can pull that. You know, depending on how many outfits he was going to buy. But I'm just saying, you know, all right. So Andy has started um, a Britney fund, he said. And he put money aside for her when she gets out. But he was like, it's not a big deal because she didn't ask for this. This is something I wanted to do for her. Andy, I have a question for you. Did you do that for your kids? Who haven't been locked up? haven't been in legal trouble did you have a college fund or a vocational training fund a nursing school fund she's a trick andy and you were winning for the biggest dummy this episode because you were a police officer and saw all this shit go down and you had your last marriage to have learned from and clearly you just cannot get it together i just i'm look i just don't have any sympathy tonight so Andy and his son decide they're gonna make a cake and it looks a hot ass mess and the son is basically like this is probably not the way to win her other son over. Um, dumbass. Andy, why didn't you just carry your ass to the local grocery store and get a sheet cake? Like, this first of all, you'd already have a proper covering. You wouldn't have to waste no time. If it was that big of a deal, just get the kind of cake that every a regular ass birthday cake. See, I don't these people, if you have a $1,200 for her to be just sitting around, you could have taken 20 of them to go get a sheet cake if it was that deep. Anyway, so then we get, I get these people on some fuck shit. Jade and Chris, this is another thing I'm tired of because I all the red flags are there and they're waving and they're crimson, okay? And she just not getting it. So Jessica asked Jade um, about Chris's situation um as they're driving to south dakota and she was like she didn't know that people were allowed to have powwows in prisons and i was thinking to myself i wasn't either but okay um jade was like well the majority of the prisoners are native american and i'm like well indigenous peoples first nations peoples are the more appropriate terms but whatever um and jessica is like oh that's nice and i was like <laughs> bitch no it's not <laughs> it's not good to hear that Oh my gosh. Anyway, so Jessica is over being in South Dakota. I understand. Jade is telling her not to start anything. Your husband, Jade, is a fuckball. And you're acting really stupid. And this is dumb. Because your husband, Chris, picks fights. So Jade and Jessica are super nervous about meeting him. And I'm like, I know she hasn't seen him in a little while. But some of y'all just are getting nervous because these men are not kind. They are aggressive over the phone. They'll be aggressive in real life, and I'm over it. Um, so, Jay, the fact that you've gone on these trips to South Dakota, I was going to say South Africa, <laughs> South Dakota before, first of all, I would have never taken those drives alone. That just seems like middle of nowhere. Certainly not for no damn prison. And I did drive alone from L.A. to New York in four days. And I stayed in some sketchy places. I didn't really have money like that when I finished graduate school. But nevertheless, I wasn't going to see no prisoner. And I was going for a new job. And here I am in New York. What's that going on? Eight years ago? Anyway. Different situation. All right. So. Jade, like. Back to your heart beating all fast. I think it's beating fast because he scares you. He's controlling and he's already economically abusive. 
you keep worrying about is he gonna divorce me and leave me homeless i'm like in your family in town girl bye so jade you have a year to get your life together and i'm gonna need you to use it i'm gonna need you to use it because this is not a good situation anyway we of course don't get to see the powwow even though i thought for some reason they would get to see the powwow since they seem to be breaking every other rule that people have for prisoners so um Jay, when they leave the power, Jade said Chris was really nice and he was really different than when he was over the phone. Jade gets by herself and they're interviewing her. And she said the power was the craziest thing she had ever seen before in her life. Like you couldn't tell who was there for what. And that that is a little iffy to me because whenever white people observe other people's cultures, they always like they'll go to a black church and be like, huh, you know, like that kind of shit. So I'm just like, mm, okay, whatever. Um, apparently he was super nice. And he was very lovey-dovey with her sister in front of her. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, abusers have the ability to do the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing. They do. And his family not being kind to you has a lot to do with boundaries he's drawn or the lack thereof. And that says how much he does not care about you. All right. So Jay was like, well, they still have shit to sort out because of the money situation this is such a weird relationship you've been with this man for five years you have not been asking the right questions i just think you don't want to work girl most of us don't want to work but we have to moving on Brittany and kira this is getting sad for me this is getting, this is getting sad. This, if I have any sympathy, this is where it's going tonight. And I've said this over and over again throughout the season, but it's really concerning to me. It really is. So Brittany goes to meet EB. She says that they don't get along well. I was thinking to myself, no shit. Do we, do we really need you to explain this to us? Y'all was hanging out and shit. And anyway, um, but EB, all of this, first of all, all these circles are too tight. Was everybody in this prison? Like, anyway. Um, but E.B. did the time with Carla, who called on the phone and told her about the fight. So, E.B., as far as I'm concerned, is a weirdo and a snake. And Kirk sent Brittany some money, so they go to this candle store. It looks like one of those stores that is just like, probably like a Kirkland's or something. Anyway, so Brittany calls herself extending the olive branch to E.B. And Brittany mentions, despite already having a conversation with Kirk last week, um tells the story of the fight she recalls the story that carla told her over the phone evie and, she, and Brittany was like you know carla right and evie's like yeah and evie was like carla's very obsessive and she creates stuff in her own head and you can't really trust her and i was thinking to myself maybe but evie you crazy as fuck too okay so let's cut the bullshit. And if she is that crazy, then what the fuck is Kirk always doing around this person? Right. Okay. So anyway, so EB was like, uh, I don't check up on you. I just watch you every day. I said, what the fuck? Press charges on this motherfucker. Okay. There are too many people working on Kirk's behalf that don't seem to like you at all, Brittany. And then they're always, but they're always watching you. For him, that seems, I'm going to tell you right now, this relationship is not going to end well. It's going to be like that other one that loved during lockup when they had that real abusive situation. I can't remember the names or whatever, um, but the girl who was like really bratty and had the money and next thing you know, he was beating her up. Yeah, I can't. So, um, EB starts questioning Brittany about who are you staying with? Who are you living with? And Brittany is like, Okay, first of all, I lived with my best friend, Shayla. And then, now I live by myself. I had lived with his family for a little bit. And EB was basically indicating, no, who else are you are you with, this, that, and the other? EB, if you want to fuck Kirik or you want to be with Kirik, just go and talk to him. Okay, because clearly you're talking to him all the time any goddamn way. Y'all are looking like some serious, crazy motherfuckers. Is Kirik a cult leader? Like, what the fuck? How the fuck is he controlling so many people outside of jail to the point where they are this invested with following her, time keeping when she comes in and out of her home, 
who she's with, who she's not with. Like, what the fuck? Like, what? I mean, I don't even understand this. None of this, first of all, is even legal. Britney pressed charges on this motherfucker for stalking. Because you already got his ass on camera talking about how he watches you every day. What the hell? Because, trust me, you pressing charges, the last thing an ex-con wants. Anyway, especially a black one. I feel bad for Britney. I really do. She stayed with his family, his friends, and she's finally getting herself together. And she is too young to be in this crazy, abusive, rocky, controlling, jealous relationship. I don't like this for you, and I'm really concerned for you. I really am. So, Britney, fuck EB, okay? This bitch said he watched her, okay? Because he lives down the block. The production set her down in the candle store, whatever the hell it was. And she was like, I'm about to have a panic attack, this, that, and the other. That girl has a lot of trauma. Brittany, you need to focus on school. You already about to get kicked out because you late. And like, what the fuck? Brittany is a grown woman, a young one, but a grown woman and damn sure a free one and can have friends. I don't give a fuck if it's some other man. What the fuck? Okay, Brittany can have friends or be with somebody else if she fucking wants. EB, fuck off. Okay, and Brittany was like, I know you have good intentions. No, he doesn't. He really doesn't. This motherfucker is crazy, and as an ex-con, he needs to be getting all the hours trying to make all the money he possibly can, not sitting around watching you. What the hell? But see, that's how I know she's young and naive. She really thinks she can reason with crazy motherfuckers like this. You can't. You cannot. And they don't deserve to be in your life. Fuck them. Okay? So, Brittany was like, um, I used to sleep outside even as a kid. And I got really judged by my parents, all the other people. And EB is like, I'm not judging you. I know the way I talk comes off as aggressive. No, motherfucker, you are judging her. You're accusing her. You're watching her. You're following her. Everything about this is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Now, I feel sorry for Brittany because she's young. Okay, but this is some bullshit. All right? And EB is aggressive as fuck. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck Kirik or leave him alone. But whatever this is, this ain't gonna work. Okay? So what if she cheated on Kirik? Kirik can break up with her the same way she can break up with Kirik. If he wants to. She didn't ask for that old sorry ass grill. Or that $300. Kira gave that to her. And did you want it? Did you need it? I guess because you ain't working. All you doing is watching her. Baby girl, you can't be in a relationship with him. I'm telling you that right now. You have like, you've had too many fights about him without that. And for him to insist that you trust him instead of listening to Carla or anybody else about him. And then he's taking information from EB and his brothers and everybody else about your whereabouts. That's already an imbalanced relationship. Baby girl, just, I know, I know you young and you trying to find your way, but this ain't, this ain't going to work. I'm telling you right now, it's going to get worse and worse. <laughs> Letitia and Key. Letitia, you need your ass whooped. But, but I'm kind of here for it. So, Letitia's in the mirror with her cousin, like, she's 16 years old, getting ready for the varsity basketball game, and they about to go, and they waiting for, you know, like, their older sister to drive them, looking at themselves in the mirror and shit. So, she show Aunt Marsha her ring. Like, is Aunt Marsha living there now? Like, I'm, I'm confused. So, Marsha is watching the kids. Like, Letitia, do you know this bitch well enough? To have her around your kids because you want to go out drinking in a bra top at 35 years old. Me and you are the same age. That is so inappropriate, leaving the house like that in front of your kids. And if you were going to go out like that, you should have wore a t-shirt or something so they don't know. Okay? Okay. Anyway, I told you, just everything about her gives me stripping. But apparently she is prisoner, former prisoner, according to Mary Jane. Thank you for telling me about that. Anyway, so Aunt Marsha is close to you, Letitia, to basically watch you for him. Okay, I am not stupid. I see right through that shit. So she goes out to show her ring to people 
without her man who's in prison. This That is some dumb bird shit. I can't fucking take it. Okay, I cannot. Okay, but he calls and asks her about the $15,000 missing from his fucking account. She was like, how do you know? I haven't sent you any statements. Well, bitch, you just basically... T- <laughs> and you did steal it. You did. Okay. He was like, even if I put out $10,000, that's a lot of money, you know, with somebody from prison. And it's for a goddamn ring. She was like, you haven't even seen me and it looks good on me. He was like, I don't care. And I'm just sitting up here like, girl. Like, bitch, did you think he was stupid? I don't care if Aunt Marsha called and told him. He was going to notice fifteen fucking thousand dollars. Hell, I would notice fifteen dollars missing from my account, okay? I stay on top of my money, but I'm a teacher, so you know, it is what it is. So she was like, well, what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours. He was like, I don't want to hear that point. <laughs> and she was like, well, you can't even get to me. So I don't even want to hear it. He's hurting my feelings, this, that, the other. And he said he was cutting shit off. She was like so mad at Marsha for telling him about the rain. I was like, bitch, what did you think she was going to do? And you knew you was wrong when you did it. And why do you have her all up in your house with your kids? And you know, if she told them she's talking shit about you to him, you think them kids can't hear that? Y'all are really fucking up raising these kids. And speaking of people fucking up raising their kids and fucking up living their life, Renika and Asante. <laughs> I hate to laugh, but it was just her behavior was just so ridiculous. And when you think about the way Renika has been acting for the past two episodes, y'all do realize that by and large she's talking to herself. I mean, yes, there's a production crew, but she's having conversations with herself. And if not, they're still making you look like you're having conversations with yourself and you look crazy, okay? You look crazy. So Renika, once again, is talking to herself at the truck stop. And she was like, I'm going to get back on the road. Uh, I could go back home, but I really need to find him. So I'm going to go back to the hotel. She was talking like, what if he needs me? I've been here for him for like 13 months. Nobody else has. Bitch, how do you know? How do you know? For all we know, some other chick has been there for even longer. He ain't had nothing to do but talk to you all day. And talk to his other chicks and all these chicks on his Instagram. Girl, go and try to at least perform at, I don't know, Magic City, some club in College Park, some club in downtown Atlanta to make this worth your while. Well, downtown Atlanta, you, you not, you not, you not, you not there yet. But nevertheless, just go do something else because make this Atlanta trip just a quick vacation and act like this never happened, even though it's on TV and recorded forever. So Renika is talking to herself trying to convince herself why it is worth going back to the hotel instead of turning her black ass around to go and check on her kids to see how their first day of school fucking was, okay? And she was like, well, the best scenario is that he shows up to the jail and I put my tongue down his throat and then we're in a happy relationship. (laughs) Bitch, is that how you see your life? I can't. And she said, then the worst scenario is that she would show up and he's not there. Or she shows up and another bitch is there, Renika. Renika, you already know he messing around with Jake. First of all, when you made that statement some weeks ago and you were like, well, even if he does have some other chick, I ain't just going to walk away. He ain't getting away that easy. And that already told me your self-esteem, um... Uh, <laughs> was really in the gutter and you need to do some self work. Cause at that point where you just going to insist on begging to be with a prison in prison, man, and not let him get rid of you. And he's offering you nothing. Girl, you, you are fucking up. You fucking up bad. And you fucking up for them kids. So, anyway, Renika, just stop looking stupid because you are playing yourself all the way to the left and playing it quick and hard, and it's looking dumber and dumber, okay? Take them kids back to Louisville. Like I said, just act like you were on vacation for a few days, and then just, you know, they probably still got the papers on file with all of their numbers and social securities and stuff, and play catch up when they get back, and just, you know, call the teachers and just figure out what they need to do. Cut your losses, okay? Because this is a loss, and you out here looking stupid, okay? Renika's dumb ass 
Then we get her back at the hotel because you know, like she she here for her man that she ain't never seen in person. When niggas dumb ass is up at six thirty a.m. not for a job search because you know she ain't got a job yet, even though they moved to Atlanta and shit, and they gonna look for a house with apparently no W twos and an ex con. Girl, bye. So she's in a. She's up at 6.30, like I said, not for a job search, but putting on makeup and a push-up bra to get a man at a jail that she doesn't even know right now if he is at that jail. Bitch. She was like, well, if he doesn't come out, I'm going to, into the prison. This, that, and the other. I was like, girl. <laughs> and can somebody please get her a new wig? That green and white. It ain't even really blonde. It's just white. Like, like I just... Renika, you would look stupid regardless, but the fact that you're about 13 and 15 year old, that means they know how to access the internet. They don't probably don't even have them kind of locks on their computer. This just is not looking good for you. I really feel sorry for them, but I do not feel sorry for you. So she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so she's talking like a straight fucking bird, okay? Like the bird, ghetto, dumb country bitch. Like she is all those things, okay? I can't wait to see my man. I just love him. I have never seen him in person. <laughs> That's why, huh? You sound like the most gutter bitch you can sound like. Low key, you kind of sounding like a bottom bitch, but I don't want to do you like that, so I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Anyway, so she goes into the jail she was like i know this ain't no jail this look like a little house on the prairie well bitch it is okay um so she looks for a sante she asked for a sante and she was like we release people in an hour and that bitch looked like she wanted to laugh in her black face that whole time okay and renika is mad at the chick behind the counter no, the chick behind the counter wasn't helpful because i do think she should be able to look at a list and see if that person is being released okay she just kept saying, oh, it'll be out in an hour. And I'm just like, bitch, you got a computer. You know who is and who isn't. You didn't say you were legally bound to not tell. Anyway, then she gets mad that she has to wait. She was like, so what am I supposed to do? Just wait in here? The woman was like, you can wait in your car. Them little waiting chairs that were sitting right there, I can tell you right now, that was racist. It was still racist because she was basically saying, you can't sit in here. Bitch, yes, she can. <laughs> but anyway... But you getting mad and embarrassed and you don't even know, like, it, oh, I hate when I can't even take a side because I, I felt that racist energy. But Renika, at the same time, you are doing some fuck shit, okay? So she goes out there and waits. Asante gets out the truck five, I think like eight hours later. That, I was like, did she go to lunch? Did she do, did she eat? Like they are processing him and she is screaming when she sees him get out the... <laughs> I hate to laugh, but this shit was just so ridiculous. She starts screaming like a high school cheerleader as he gets out the truck and blah, 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 and I'm like, okay. Then she calls him and he was like, well, they were going to search me. That's why I didn't have my phone. Is that any other? Okay, maybe. Whatever. So she starts asking about his bond bill. And she said, well, look, the number for your family member was not right. So like when he was like, well, I'm taking care of it. She was like, are you taking care of it or are you going to take care of it? Like, I need to know. Because she doesn't have the money. And I was like, bitch, any money you do have, you need that money for you and your children and a place to live. And since you were living with your mama when you were in Louisville, and apparently you talking about you spent all your money to move there, tells me you don't have enough money. And clearly you don't have no income right now. What the fuck are you doing? Oh my gosh. Then Asante is like in there, right? And he hasn't paid this bond bill. Apparently, ain't none of them chicks he talking to on Instagram sending him enough money for. I don't know. Um, Asante is like, I'm stressed that Renika isn't taking care of my bond. He's telling the camera crew this. And she's my girl, so she is supposed to. I said, oh, you motherfucker, you. I mean, I already knew you wasn't shit. Um you excuse me motherfucker you fucking ex-con i can't stand these men that expect women to take care of them period i don't give a fuck i'm independent all day i don't give a fuck i still ain't taking care of no man that's still a man's job period 
especially financially. You ain't got shit to offer me. Renika, take your ass back to Kentucky. Just go. Damn. Stop being so stupid. So anyway, then he's calling his homeboy to get the money to him. And he was like, well, I don't want so-and-so picking up her to start calling her phone or whatever. And it's basically, we know it's going to be another chick. Renika, you are dumb, dumb, dumb. But I did get a good kiki out of watching you laugh and talk to yourself. So anyway, y'all have a good night. I'm going to review the rest of Love is Blind. I watched it. You know, it was underwhelming. But nevertheless, I'm going to review it. Um, So I'll probably see y'all tomorrow. I'm going to get some rest. And y'all have a good night. Bye.